Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going and training either one of my horses or purchasing a new one because I have a problem. I buy too many horses, but we're not gonna talk about it. That's not what this video is about, okay? We're gonna go train a horse while I talk about the reason I left SSO. This is a question that I've been asked so, so much, especially recently because people have been asking, oh, can I get your SSO RRP back? Can you do an SSO live? Are you gonna be at, you know, this year's SSO con? What's your social security number? I know you guys are very curious people and I'm gonna be answering all of that today, except for the last question. Cause that's like, that's identity theft. If you are somebody who is looking to get Red Dead Redemption 2 or another game, feel free to check out my link down below to Instant Gaming. This website allows you to buy Red Dead Redemption 2, Special Edition, Ultimate Edition, and so much more, plus a lot of other games for a lot cheaper. I also have a giveaway down in the description that runs monthly on Instant Gaming and allows the winner to have any game of their choice for free. There's a stable right behind me, so I'm just gonna go in here and look for what we have. I'm gonna go and look at the selection. I think the next horse I wanted to get was a Norfolk. This one right here. This one is the one that I've been wanting, but we'll go, we'll come back to it. So I think I'm gonna end up getting this one. I just like how soft it looks. Like it looks like a very soft horse. And I like the Norfolk Roadsters. They're like a decent sized horse. Oh shoot, I, I have to name it. I always suck at naming these horses. I usually name it after something on my desk, but all I have on my desk currently is my birth control and I'm not naming my horse after birth control and my candle. And I'm pretty sure I already have a horse on another game named Champagne Toast. I'm just not gonna name it yet and you guys can help me name it. So just comment something below. I have a thousand dollars left. Oh my gosh, I need to stop buying horses. I keep on buying horses right when I get enough money. I didn't realize how much money I had. There's my my beautiful mare. Ah! Why is she already tacked up? You just had tack. Go away, go away, go away. She doesn't have tack anymore. We're gonna go and tack her up really quick. I believe it's the McClellan saddles that are like smaller, like Englishy. And I'm gonna go and buy blankets. Um, let's do basic. Basic looks good. And then I want to put a set of shoes on her. And I kind of want another bridle for her because this one has like blue in it and there's no blue in the tack. So kind of bright in here though. I think this is the double bridle. Yeah. I don't know how it'll look because the lighting in here is kind of scuffed. So I guess we'll see it in the light outside. Come here. Ah. I missed you. Mommy missed you. Mumsy loves you. I feel like the only thing is the bridle is like a little bit darker brown, but like who's judging, right? Except you guys, except thousands of people. If you look on the map, there's these little saddle icons. This is where you train your horse and all horses start at zero for their XP. And we're trying to get her to 10,000 because at 10,000, she is fully trained. Any XP after that isn't gonna count towards her price. Hypothetically speaking. You're supposed to train them up and then resell them. We're gonna go ahead and go to the Blackwater jumping. Now the server has been kind of like popping off recently. So there could be someone over here already. All the training spots today during stream were like either taken or somebody walked up after to use it. Oh, <laughs> it's Ayer. I love Ayer. Oh my gosh, Ayer and Maverick. Okay, so they're letting me use the course, which is nice. You guys will not believe this. I went to edit this video and I had stopped recording and then I just started yapping and guess what? I didn't record it. That means I have to yap all over again. Oh my gosh. The reason that I stopped playing Star Stable, which I wanted to talk about this for a long time because I've gotten so many questions about it, but I haven't really found the effort to because there's so much that went on behind the scenes that you guys don't know about and i'm not here to spill any tea i'm not going to be mentioning any names in this video i'm not about to be a clout chaser or stoop to people's levels you know that have done me dirty in the past but definitely going to be talking about some things that i should have been talking about a long time ago do you know when you kind of leave a situation alone for a long time and when you come back to it you have so much more clarity on the topic that's kind of the situation with Star Stable. I felt like I was so clouded with anger and with hate for the game and the community that I just couldn't realistically talk about it without blowing up and looking like a complete asshole online. I stopped playing period about a year ago and then I started playing little by little again. 
and I only got on to record about once a month max. Sometimes I'd get on just to train with friends and goof off, and I still do sometimes, but I don't play Star Stable anymore. The biggest reason that I don't play Star Stable anymore, which a lot of people will agree with, is Star Stable was a childhood game. And when I played it when I was a kid, I was very comfortable with the situation. I was very comfortable with the current game. And since then, they've updated the game completely, which isn't a bad thing. Every game gets updates, but it kind of ruined the idea of the game in my mind because they removed so many OG things and it didn't feel like the same game anymore. And I also just grew up. I grew up and I outgrew the game. And this isn't saying that people who are adults or people who are older can't enjoy Star Stable. I'm saying me personally, it ruined a lot of the game for me. When you create content on a game that you don't like anymore, you're gonna be suffering. I don't wanna pair content creation with something that I hate doing, so I decided to stop making Star Stable videos. It wasn't because I wasn't getting any more views on the videos or I was getting backlash. I truthfully just did not want to create Star Stable videos anymore. I'll talk about another thing that stopped me from making videos, but I was getting a lot of views on my videos. I was averaging about 10 to 30k on each video that I posted, and that's a lot of views for a small YouTuber. And I'm talking about over time, it wasn't like immediately, it wasn't a week after posting, it was over time. So for somebody that only had 10k subscribers, it was a lot of views. I was making grocery money and I was able to spend it on, you know, a few things each week. Being a college student, all that monetization money gets spent really quick, even if it's only like 30 bucks, that's 30 bucks towards another textbook or 30 bucks towards groceries. Being a college student wasn't cheap, which is why I had a full-time job on the side. I just felt like my time wasn't being put towards something that I love doing, so I decided to stop making videos full-time on it. Now the next part that I want to talk about, which I want to clarify before I start talking about it, I have no beef with anybody in the community. Everything that happened in the community, I have forgiven and somewhat forgotten, so it's not a big deal. But I do want to talk about the shit that happened with the community. The biggest thing is that I had pretty much every idea that I posted on YouTube, and I'm not exaggerating. Every single idea I put on YouTube with every single series got stolen. Thumbnails, titles, plots, names from videos, names from horses got stolen. It was sad to see that people were so okay with just yoinking stuff from your channel and putting it on their own. And these weren't just children, guys. They were grown adults doing this. They knew what they were doing and they still decided to do it. I was a small creator at the time, so I didn't call it out because I felt like if I called it out, I would immediately be canceled by somebody. You know, back then as a baby YouTuber, I felt like I didn't really have an influence and I probably didn't. I mean, if I asked the community, hey, this person's stealing from me, please help me. I don't think anybody really would have stepped up because the Star Stable community is very almost like cancel culture like, burn at the stake like. I was talking about this with somebody the other day, but every time I've seen an issue on Star Stable come up, including two people, it's usually very heavy on one side. Somebody is getting canceled, somebody's life is getting ruined. Y'all, I've seen people lose jobs over Star Stable drama. I've seen people get their colleges called and they lose scholarships. I have seen people have to shut down their entire social media lives and can never come back to social media because of some simple online drama. Not to mention the SSO clubs have always been sort of like cult-like to me. I'm not saying every single SSO club is like that. I've seen a lot of SSO clubs that are like family and a lot of people cherish them and it's a safe place for a lot of people, but almost every single club I've been in has ended badly. They talk about people like they know them IRL, and then after you leave, you just hear the most heinous stuff said about you and you're like, oh my God, what do I even say to this? At one point I had somebody that I knew IRL for a long time talk about me and my boyfriend at the time. I saw some pretty crazy things on a screenshot and I was like, oh, like, what did I do to deserve this? What did I do in this situation? I've seen people get their addresses leaked in club chats. I'm not just talking on Star Stable, I'm talking on club discords, the closed servers. You guys don't know what goes on in the closed servers of some clubs. I've been in pretty well-known clubs before, and the closed chats are insane. Shame-free, just send someone's address or someone's number or show their Instagram and say, look what she did, look what she wore. And they talk about people like it's their job, and you can't really talk against them because it's an, it's an entire club against one person. It's an entire group of people that tie together against one person. So I felt like the club community was also a very toxic place, especially when it came to adults mixing with kids. I'm 200 away from maxing this horse. One more round and I can max this horse. 
So after I got my themes and everything stolen from me, like I said, my thumbnails, my titles, I decided to take a long break from posting Star Stable. Now, I was one of the top RRPers at the time in the community, and I really did hate leaving on such short notice. But then I moved to Swem, and I moved to, you know, Minecraft Pixel Horse content. That got stolen from me. There was a channel that started posting all of my videos, same thumbnails, same titles. They are still going to this day. I'm not going to talk about who it is, but definitely something that was stolen from me and I felt like I couldn't post on because instead of just making a whole new topic and theme inside of a pre-existing niche, they decided to take the only pre-existing topic and theme in the niche. I mean, if a niche is so small, guys, like, make something else, make something new. I always felt like I was complaining about Star Stable. And I, I know a lot of people will agree with this. Content creators yap about Star Stable being horrible, but they still play the game and they still support the game and they still spend star coins on the game. I'm not saying that you should practice what you preach because sometimes I say something like, oh, they should do this, they should do that. And then I continue playing the game. But if your entire channel is about hating on Star Stable, then maybe try a different type of game. And I didn't want to feel like I was constantly hating on Star Stable. I didn't want to feel like I was constantly berating a game that was just trying to continue their business. Now, I will say that a lot of Star Stable's tactics for marketing have been scummy and they've been very sneaky, but they're a business, you know, and I'm not going to go at them publicly because I don't like how they did this in a game or that in a game. I just left the game. I felt like a lot of the content creators were being mistreated. They were basically giving free marketing to the game. I will say that Star Sable did an amazing job with adding features like the wild horse mode, you know, invisible while mounted, invisible while dismounted, both horse and player invisible, all that stuff. I think they did an amazing job, but we had to wait five years for that. I had a lot of scary things happen to me on the Star Sable community. I found myself a lot of times questioning why I was part of the Star Sable community. So I mentioned earlier how Star Sable is a childhood game for me. I want to keep it in my childhood. I want to remember it with, oh, I loved logging on late at night before school or early in the morning before school or after school, before doing my homework and playing the game and meeting new friends. I mean, I still have friends that I met through Star Sable on YouTube. I don't know if you guys remember Hannah Opaltree, love you, Hannah, but she has been one of my best friends for years and I met her through Star Stable. I met her through YouTube and I would have never met that amazing human being if it hadn't been for Star Stable. I met Jessica or Jday Games through Star Stable. I met her through Hannah actually, but also through Star Stable. So I hope nobody thinks that I'm completely dissing the game at all. I mean, a lot of people find love in that game and a lot of people appreciate that game, but I do want to keep it in my childhood because that's when I was happiest with the game. I never want to pair a game that I use to comfort myself in very dark times in my life. I never want to treat it like that. The same game that I played back then is not the same game that exists today, and I think childhood Peachy, and now adult Peachy, is noticing that. And childhood Peachy cherished it, adult Peachy, she's kind of done with it. I like how on Star Stable, I never trained my horses, I always left them level 1 because I despise training, and here I am training on Red Dead, already maxed this horse, probably gonna go max another one tonight. I'm living my best life, y'all. The last thing I want to say, and it's more of a warning to people, is don't let people choose your games. I just want to say this too to the people who are listening and feel like they can't leave a certain game because it's just a, they're attached to it. If you really feel like that game is not growing on you and it kind of fell off by the time you got to a certain age or you feel like you're spending too much money on it and you wish there was another game, there's always more games. I'm not just talking about Red Dead. Red Dead is a very picky game because you have to have the computer to run it and not a lot of people have those resources. It is tough to leave a game. It's tough to kind of make that final step to not support a game or a community anymore. I hope that whoever does decide to leave any game community, that it gives you a good outcome and not a bad one, not a negative one. But at the same time, do not let anybody convince you to leave a community that you don't feel like you need to leave. Do not let anybody chase you or corner you because nobody deserves to feel like they're being chased out of a game that they have always cherished. A comfort game is a comfort game for a reason and when somebody makes that an uncomfortable game, then it kind of ruins your whole perspective on not just that game, but gaming in general. It sucks because when you grow up, you realize so much behind the scenes and you're not so innocent anymore. It didn't really have a lot to do with Star Stable. It had a lot to do with its community. I learned so much behind the scenes that I wish I'd never learned. I wish that I'd never heard some things that people said about me, some things people accused me of. I always loved making content on Star Stable. That's one of the biggest things I loved about the game is I could always find new ways to make videos. 
I remember my reels, the cinematic reels with the reshade was like my favorite thing and it went low-key viral. And then someone started taking them. Someone started making their own cinematic TikToks and reels and I just felt like, okay, it's time to go. I had a very specific theme that nobody else did and I made sure that nobody else did and it got taken. So I just decided to leave it in the past, leave it behind. It kind of sucks when you work hard on making something your own and then someone else kind of yoinks it from you and it's no longer unique. You no longer feel like that was your hard work. It kind of feels like someone just put their name tag on it. So I am much happier in the situation that I'm at now, both IRL and in video games. I feel like I'm loving Red Dead and Minecraft more and more every single day. The community that I've met have been so sweet and it's weird going from a community where you've gotten so much negative to a community where you've gotten so much positive. It's eye-opening, truly. I know a lot of you will share familiar views because I've talked to a lot of you, at least a lot of my older subscribers about Star Stable and how it has kind of progressed for me. But I'd love to hear your guys' perspective, especially for those who are still playing the game and you know, like how you guys have stuck through the game. Also, I know some of my subscribers watch topics that they don't know anything about. So I also want to know if anybody's watching this and you have no idea what Star Stable is. I had one guy comment on one of my videos like two years ago being like, I don't know what this game is, but I just watched the entire thing and I don't know why. And it was just, I don't know, it was so wholesome to me. Like some people are still watching my content even though they have no idea what I'm talking about. It's heartwarming to know you guys like hearing me yap because I can't stand it sometimes. Okay, horsey, you're done. If you guys have any name suggestions, feel free to comment down below, but she's maxed. She's all good now. Oh, okay, so she will sell for more than I bought her for. Okay, I bought her for 6,000, so she sells for two, about 2.4 more, I think it said. So that's about 40 minutes of work. I think it's worth it to train horses, but I don't know if I can do it too much, because like I said, on games, I don't like training horses that much. Also, really quickly before I leave, I wanted to show Matt or Glitch's fan art of Misu and Sushi. Matt has joined me in some of my recent The Rift or Red M streams, so feel free to go rewatch those. And thank you, Matt, for the beautiful drawings. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys stay healthy and safe and hydrated, and I will see you in the next video or stream. Also, my sister bought banana milk. So good. Oh my god.